Okay, well, welcome to chapter 12 of the book of Daniel, the final chapter of this amazing book. This one's another revelation about the last days we're going to see uh, as we're wrapping things up here. And so let's jump in and get started. Uh, verse 1, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. So this is going to be something... Uh, crazy amount of trouble we haven't even seen yet not even in history have we seen anything like this yet and at that time thy people shall be delivered every one that shall be found written in the book what is the book the book of life the book that's kept in heaven we saw this in i believe it was chapter seven we they talked about michael coming down and the book and the judgment so those who are in the book those who are ready are going to be who who've done the you know ordinances and commandments and stuff, they're going to be ready. Verse two, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. So a resurrection is going to happen. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Very important. Look at Isaiah sixty six for some ideas on this. Basically, the remember the two ways path of the two ways concept is common in Gnostic writings, uh, but that's that's what Isaiah comes to. You can follow God. You cannot follow God. It's your choice. These are the only two options. Everything in life is going to add up to this. Are you going to follow God? Or are you going to not follow God? And that's what they're saying here too, this duality. Those, we're going to have a resurrection. Some are going to come to be good and some are going to be coming going, yeah, not good. Verse 33, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Now that's an interesting way to say it. So people are running around looking for the words. They're looking for the word of God, but they can't find it. Okay. Now what's interesting is knowledge shall be increased. This isn't really great translation of verse 4. Uh, the old Greek translation of this, which is the oldest version, it says evil. Evil shall be increased, not knowledge. So and this is, Dan McClellan talks about this in one of his uh, podcasts or, or YouTube videos. Sorry. Evil will increase is a better translation. So many shall run around and evil will increase. So the time of the end, seal this up to the time of the end, basically. Verse 5, then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river. Uh, now realize, rivers are a good metaphor for a passage of time. Uh, verse 6, and one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, so not standing on the bank, but all like standing on him, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders. So he isn't, again, he isn't in it, but he's on the river. Uh, verse 7, And I heard the man clothed with in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. Now remember that. That's what we've, we've talked about this before. We've seen this in Daniel before. Time times and a half. So 3.5, okay, is what they're looking at. Or half of seven. Seven is the number of perfection. Okay, no, we're not sure how much time does this mean? Is it a thousand years to a day or whatever? You know, we don't know. Most of the time what happens when people are trying to interpret this, and, and we talked a bit about this a couple chapters ago, is that they're People try to take their interpretation of the what that means, what does that measurement mean, and then put it into here and then see if it works. And most of the time, it fails. Okay, you can look at the whole Ezra's Eagle guy that was out there. He had it. He's been selling his own books. Um, he was wrong about the Ezra's Eagle prophecies about Donald Trump and Joe Biden and stuff. It was wrong. So he had to completely rescrap, rescrap everything and start over and try it again. That's someone touting their own ideas, okay? That's not trying to 
They're trying to get rich, trying to build their own selves up for that. Okay. The reality is we don't fully know how these times work out. We don't, we don't have the key or the legend that says, here's what this measurement means. Without that, we don't fully know what it means. Okay. There's lots of people who try to use numerology and astrology and all these other things to try to make it, try to find a model that fits. That's like saying, I've got a lock that's locked and I need a key to open it. So I'm going to try every key I can until I find some that work. Now you'll notice some keys will slide in, but won't turn. So they seem good, but they're not correct. That's what's, that's what happens. And so we'll just realize anytime somebody says, I know the end of the days, I know when things are going to come. I know when Christ is going to come. I figured it out. Baloney. You're safer ignoring them than believing them. Just realize that, okay? They are proven wrong over and over again. There's tons of history of people, oh, Christ is going to come at this day, so let's all kill ourselves and wait for the comet or whatever it is. It's all going, they're all going to be wrong, okay? They're all going to be wrong. So just, just start with that assumption. You're going to be wrong, okay? It's interesting to look at sometimes, but just realize eh, it's going to be wrong, okay? We don't know. And that's on purpose, I think. God doesn't want to know. Because let's face it, if we knew, hey, in the year 23 something or other, the world's going to fall apart. One, we would look at it and go, I'm not going to be around, so I don't have to worry about it. I'm just going to live my life the way I want. And it'll be fine, which is wrong. Others are going to look at it and go, hey, I can, you know, I can wait and then repent right before. No, God doesn't want that. God wants us to repent now. So he's not going to tell us when the end's coming. So that it's in, it's a motivation for us to repent now. Uh, so let's see, let's move on here. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, that's scattering of Israel, all these things shall be finished. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O Lord my God, what shall be the end of these things? So he's like, okay, but what does this really mean? What's, what's really going on with this? So verse 9, and he said, go thy way, Daniel. For the words are closed up and sealed until the time of the end. So uh, I have a quote here that kind of goes along with some things here. So Daniel, like many prophets, have asked the timing of when the end of the world will come. But God does not reveal it to any of them. That's like what we just talked about. He's not revealing that end time. Okay, God does not want us to wait till the last minute. Uh, in fact, Doctrine and Covenants section 130, Joseph Smith asked that question. And he got told the same thing. Don't worry about it. Uh, William Miller, a founder of the Adventist movement, predicted Christ coming in 1844, which prediction Joseph Smith declared to be false. Miller's calculations came from interpretation of this passage in Daniel. Time and again, people have thought they had the key and enticed others to believe, only to reap disappointment. Even today, there are those who predict earthquakes and great calamities occurring on specific dates based on this passage in Daniel, and sadly, they still entice others to believe and follow. But they're wrong. So just realize that. Okay, now continuing on here, verse 10, many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. So some are going to get good. This is, remember, the wheat and the tares analogy. Some are going to get good, and they're going to be purified through trials, and wicked are just going to do wicked. Okay, none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So the wicked people are going to have a hard time with this. They won't get it. So the wise will understand this. Okay, Those who are paying attention to God, basically. Now, verse 11, And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand and two hundred and ninety days. Again, another one of those time frames that it's hard to really tell what that means. Uh, verse 12, Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. There's another one. Verse 13, But go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the day. So basically, don't worry about it. Don't worry about the timing. Just keep being righteous. Stand in holy places. God will take care of it. You're fine. That's really all it comes down to. So don't worry about trying to time it. It's a waste of time to figure that out. Just focus on being good 
being holy. Really, it's more important for you to realize, I don't know when you might, you know, you don't know when you're going to die. So just be ready to meet God. Always be ready to re- be repentant, be humble, be ready. So in case it happens, you're, you're ready to meet God. Like Daniel, when he went to the lion's den. Be ready before you die. Don't think, crap, I need to now repent and change right before I die. Be ready long before then. That's the really important part of the gospel is to, to let go of those sins and improve yourself now. Do not wait. Do it now. That's important. It's probably the best message we can get from this whole book of Daniel. Repent now. Improve your life now. Give up the worldliness. Follow God more in your life. That's the ultimate crux of what we talk about in this book. So thanks for watching. Let's jump over to the next book as we continue forward in the Old Testament.